Okay, let's do question two. So, it says a survey was conducted among, among 100 people about the amount that they paid on a monthly basis for their cell phone contracts. Okay, the person carrying out the survey calculated the estimated mean as 100, 309 rand per month. Unfortunately, he lost some of the data thereafter. The partial results of the survey are shown in a frequency table below. Okay, so we see that we don't have A, oh, sorry, we do have that. We don't have A or B. Okay, let me just get a highlighter. But we know that all of these guys, right, when we add them all up, need to add to 100. Okay, so we know that there's a kind of way, like, we'll be okay. We can probably figure out A and B. Okay, so it says, how many people paid 200 rand or less on their monthly cell phone contract? So now, what they're testing here right, is they're testing whether you can display your understanding of inequalities, right, because here, right, we have 200 there and we have 200 there. This 200 here means that 200 is included in this category because of that little sign there. 200 is excluded from this category. So 200 rand or less is the sum of these two, right, of 7 and 12, therefore it is 19. Okay, so it's quite a nice um, introductory question, right? So we're going to say 19 as just 19 people. Okay. Um, so 19 people pay 200 rand. Ooh, 200 rand or less. Okay, not a problem. Okay, let's now go to 2.2. Now, 2.2 is a much meatier question. Okay, and it's one of these ones that sometimes when students see this, they're like, okay, I'm going to skip this one. It seems impossible, but it's not. This one is just testing how you can um, display your understanding of simultaneous equations. So it says, use the information above to show that A equals 24 and B equals 16. So basically, they want to solve for the unknowns. Okay, but what do we know? We know that all of these guys have to equal 100. But we know something else, right, which will help us with the simultaneous equation, right? We say the estimated mean is 309 rand per month. So we know, right, that we have two measures which we can use to make two simultaneous equations and solve for A and B. Remember, we need as many simultaneous equations um, as we have variables to solve for. So if we have two, we can solve for two variables. So let's write these out. I always struggle with space on these answer sheets. I don't know if you guys struggle with it. Maybe I just write really big. I don't know. So we know that 7 plus 12, right, plus A plus 35 plus B plus 6 equals 100. Okay? That's what we have there. So let's just simplify this, right? So if we put this into our calculator, let's add all the numbers on that side. 7 plus 12 plus 35 plus 6. Okay, perfect. Um, minus 100. Okay, well, let me just write this out so I'm not losing you. Equals 100. So A plus B equals 40. Which is already good news because we know that 24 plus 16 equals 40. So we know that we're kind of on the right track there, right? Okay, I'm just going to put mine into normal mode again. Um, so we have one simultaneous equation. Sorry, my dogs are doing all of the barking. I'm not sure what's going on. Okay, then we know that the mean equals 309. Okay, so remember you, the mean, so we have 309. Okay, 309 is going to be the, the average, right? And how do we get the average with a frequency table? Well, we know we're going to be dividing by 100, right? Because we have 100 people. It's not a problem, but it's difficult when it's frequency, right? Because we don't have the exact data points. We just have an interval. So generally what we do is you use the midpoint, right? So I'm just going to say a midpoint. So that's 50. I'm just writing in the midpoint of each of um, these intervals to help us find the mean for the overall data set, okay? So what you say here is you say, okay, I say 50, times 7 plus 12 uh, times 150 plus A times 250 plus 350 times 30. Oh, sorry. I'm being very inconsistent with my um, terminology here. Sorry, with my use of 
um, order, but I hope you're following. B times 450 plus 6 times 550. Okay. So basically what we're saying is, we're saying, well, you've given us the mean. We have the intervals. The only thing we don't have is the frequency for some of the intervals, right? But what we can do is we can still solve, right? So just make sure that you understand that it's frequency times the midpoint of each of the intervals, right? Okay? And then let's solve so that it's just in the form of A and B um, without sort of all these numerous um, terms in the, in the numerator, okay? So I'm just going to put in all the ones that are non-A and B, and I'm just going to solve for those. So 50 times 7 plus 12 times 150 plus, so I'm just doing that one, I'm doing that one, I'm doing that one, and I'm doing that one. So the ones that don't have variables in them, because obviously I can't type the variable into my calculator, right? Um, plus 6 times 550. Okay, so I have 7700. Seven, zero, zero plus 250A plus 450B over 100. Okay? So now, let's just quickly do some solving. We can times 100 up there. Um, so we can say 30900. Zero, zero. We can then um, subtract this, right? And that gives us 250A plus 450B. So let me just check that I'm doing that correctly. I don't want to be doing things incorrectly. So I'm times that by 100 minus 17 that. Okay. So this is what I am left with. But from over here, right, we know that um, A equals 40 minus B. So we can just sub that into here, right, in order to solve for B. And if we can solve for B, then we can solve for A. Okay. So we can just say 250, 40 minus B plus 450B equals this. Yeah, you see I'm running out of space. Maybe I'm writing too many steps. I'm not sure. But let's just continue... Right, so I'm literally just multiplying this out, right? Basic algebra that's going on here, right? Just times that 250 in there. That's what, oh, you see, I forgot the B there. Okay, so this you're going to make 3,200 because I'm now going to subtract this 10,000 from both sides. And I'm going to have 200B, right? Which gives me B equal to 16. Okay, so we use the mean. We calculated the mean with the frequencies. We we narrowed it down to this here. We subbed in A. So I'm just going to put this sub. We subbed in 1. So this is 2. We subbed in 1 to get it in terms of B. We solve for B. So now if we go back to 1, we can say, well, A equals 40 minus 16, which equals 24. Okay. So basically what we're showing there is we're showing that we can do simultaneous equations, but we also understand different statistical measures and how we can use them to answer a question and solve for unknowns. Okay, so great question that, but sometimes a little bit tricky. Okay, so now I've used the whole space for 2.3, so we're going to have to squish it in there. So it says, write down the modal class for the data. So let's just write in these values here now so that we know, right, what they are. Mode or modal means most. So where are most of the people sitting? Well, most of the people are sitting between 300 and 400, right? Because 35 is bigger than any other frequency. So you can just put in here, right? You can just put in, I mean, preferably not underneath, but 2.3 is between 300 and 400. 400 inclusive, okay? So that is 2.3. Okay, now let's move on to 2.4. Okay, 2.4. Sure, I'm running out of space here. Okay, 2.4 says, on the grid provided in the answer book, there it is there, it says, draw an ogive, a cumulative um, frequency graph to represent the data. So remember an ogive generally has this like sloped S shape, right? So that's a shape you should be expecting. But let's plot these points. We're going to plot all these different points that we have here, okay? And remember, 
we plot, when we plot points, we is plotted at the end of the interval, the upper bound. Okay, that's quite important because when we're doing the average, we use the midpoint. But when we're plotting, we use the upper, the upper bound, right? So it's important to remember these little um, points. Okay, so at 100, at 100 it is, okay, you should probably not be using um, your pen like me, but I still, believe it or not, do not have a pencil. Okay, at 200 we are sitting at now, this is important, right? It is cumulative. Cumulative. So you can't just go 7, 12, 24, 35, 16, 6. You have to go like this. You go 7. Then you say, what is 12 plus 7? It is 19. Then you say, what is 24 plus 19? 43. What is 35 plus 43? 78. What is 16 plus 78? 94. What is 6 plus 94? 100. Because remember, it is cumulative. Okay? Cumulative. Right? We are accounting for frequencies as we go up. Right? So here it's actually saying, what is between 0 and 100? Here it's saying, well, how many people are actually between 0 and 200? Yeah, it's between 0 and 300. Do you, see, do you see what I'm saying? Like, they're adding to each other. It's like layers, right? So... Here at 7, but for 200, it is 19, okay? Then for um, 300, it is 43. So just make sure that you um, are plotting these correctly, right? Because we can see here that each little block represents 2, okay? So try to do this as accurately as possible because what's going to happen is they're going to ask questions based on the graph. So if you haven't plotted it correctly, then we are sometimes going to be in a little bit of trouble. Okay, so it goes from 43 to 78. Then at 500, it is 94. And then at 600, it is at 100%. And remember, at the last point, you expect it to be 100%. Because when you're doing, or not 100%, right? Um, you're expecting it to be at the, the, the maximum amount of the total data set because it is you're accounting for how this data set, right, how these 100 people are split into these different frequencies. But when you get to the highest frequency, right, you should say, well, everyone's been accounted for now, right? Everyone's been accounted for. That's what it means. So now we have all these points. Let's plot. Now, I'm a bit hesitant about plotting with this, with this pen, but here goes nothing. Um, okay, ooh. Okay, please, please, please plot with the pencil, guys. My oh god, looking a bit ugly. But it's got that air shape that we anticipated. Do you see that? Remember? Yeah, let's just make sure that everything is labeled. Okay, labeled, labeled, labeled. We don't have to do any other labeling, right? We could maybe put your um, cumulative frequency graph if you want. But oh god, is pretty much that. Okay, so let's just make sure. And remember, it must also start at zero. Okay, sometimes students just start it at the first point and then they draw it. Well, it's cumulative. It starts with nothing and it ends with the whole data set or sample size. Okay, it's important. So we have that. I think we've finished. I don't think there's anything really that we need um, to add to that. Okay, remember, cumulative frequency. Most important thing here is to do that. If you want, you can actually, what I'm writing on the on the paper, you can actually write on the answer book and do it over here. If you want to display some working. Okay, you can do that if you want to. I'm just doing it because I want you to see the question um, while I explain. Okay. Now let's do the last question. So it says, determine how many people paid more than 420 rand per month for their cell phone contract. So basically what they're saying, they're saying, read this point off the graph. Okay, let's find where 420 is. It's always good to use a ruler. 420, we see that each of the blocks on this side actually account for one, right? So on over here, it accounts for two. Here it accounts for, well, one. It's actually not one, it would be 10, right? Because each of these blocks are 10 because we go from 400 to 500. Each of the blocks here are two. Okay, it's important to understand the scale of the graph that you're looking at. So if we're looking at 420, we're looking at this line here. So let's draw this up. 
Okay, remember, it's not 100% to scale, so it's kind of looking like, I'm going to say 82, right? It's looking like 82 to me, right? So I'm going to say, well, we know, right? It says, I'm just going to write you it first. Let's, let me not skip step. So at 420, I have 82 people, right? That's how much I have, but, or how many people I have. It says, determine how many people paid more paid more than 420 per month for their cell phone contract. So we're going to say, well, we know there's 100 people and we know that 82 of them pay 420 rand or less every month because those are everyone on this side of the graph, but they're asking for the people this side of the graph. So we're going to say 100 minus 82 gives me 18 people, right? So 18 people pay more than 420 rand per month. Okay, so what they're asking you here is whether you can display your understanding of OGIVE, one, draw the OGIVE, but then also display some understanding and interpretation of what's going on. Okay, so that's the majority of the, the stats of this paper done. Um, we're going to move on to some more um, sort of analytical geometry and, and um, some trick. Right. Um, but I hope that was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.